So you can describe how it works. Okay. So uh, now it's recording, more or less. Okay. Uh, okay. So my name is Adam. Uh, from IDIS and the equipment we make, we make a lot of olfactometers, different stuff from big ones to small ones and this one we use the same as our big olfactometers as the six panel EN olfactometers and we try to keep exactly the same principle of operation. So what we have here, it's a portable olfactometer, it weighs about three kilos and you can do with it ambient sampling, you can do with it stack sampling and odor analysis, so it will give you odor units for air from a flux chamber or anything like this. And let me explain how it works. You have here a tank of compressed air. This tank holds about uh, 20 samples worth of air for 15 minutes. The air inside is filled using scuba tanks like that. Uh, I think you took a video before, but yeah, but uh, uh, I can show again. I, I, I'm not able to get on. Oh, okay, okay, let's do it all together. So maybe in the future. So okay, here so. Uh, we connect it to our tank. This tank is just a normal scuba tank with the adapter that we sell. And basically, what you do is you just you open it up, and the air will go into this tank. And then once it's full, close it up, release the pressure, and a couple of minutes, and you have now a full tank. How how long does it last uh, for a sample, a normal sample? Uh, normal, you can do with 20 normal samples with this. With just with the air inside this valve right now. Yeah, it's 15 minutes. If you just open it for 15 minutes, it will give you enough air. Uh -huh. And because each sample takes between 30 minutes, 30 seconds to one minute, say about 20. But uh, okay. this, this one can fill the little tank about 20 times. Mm -hmm. So if you think about four to six hundred times, I guess mm -hmm. you can four to six hundred samples mm -hmm. per tank. Yeah. So the air from here goes through a pressure regulator. Mm -hmm. and at 80 psi and then goes through a second filter and the filter here is there shouldn't be any smell in here but just in case there is this will take it out mm -hmm. that's why it usually lasts for at least a year the filter because it's not really doing that much mm -hmm. it's just uh, active carbon inside, it's an active carbon yeah. oh. it's an active carbon okay. filter inside um, so the air we have another one of these tanks inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see this one is pressurized, mm -hmm. it's at 80 psi. Mm -hmm. So this is a normal pressure, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, For sampling. For sampling. Mm -hmm. And the, the important thing is to have the right flow. And uh, uh, flow should be 20 liters per minute, mm -hmm. according to the EN standard, and 0.25 meters per second. And this is what we designed the mask in a way that 20 liters per minute coming through this will give you 2.5 meters per second. Mm -hmm. So then you wear the mask, let's say I'm doing an ambient sampling. And we can show after for using it to do a stack sample. Right, so I'm going to wear this. I would put on the mask. Mm -hmm. What are you leaving here? Thursday? I'm leaving on Thursday. Like I'll take it off because I won't be able to speak. <laughs> but imagine I'm wearing That would be, yes, yes. Thursday um, and I start my analysis by closing down the valve here and opening it up. Okay, well, and we'll have here just fresh air coming. Mm -hmm. And this is just to clean your nose. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, as the air is passing through here, there is underneath this a venturi pump, stainless steel venturi pump. And this creates a vacuum inside this chamber. And I can now allow some sample to be pulled in from here. I can control the dilution by turning this knob. So you have here numbers. Mm -hmm. And every time I turn, I open up another hole that is underneath, mm -hmm. allowing more sample to come. So I start out with only fresh air, and I add sample to it slowly, slowly. And I stop when I smell the sample coming out here. And then based on this, I can... So you, you regulate the flow here, right? Regulate the flow of the sample. It's 20 liters of pressure coming. All the time, yeah. And you but regulate here, here, regulate the flow of the sample being and, pulled and in. And the mix of the two flows? It happens inside this, inside the venturi pump. Uh -huh. uh, it's a turbulent and it mixes well, right? Uh -huh. uh, so I can adjust 
So yeah, I do like this. Do we have, you have uh, numbers here, right? Or yes, yes, numbers right here. And uh, what are these numbers for? So the numbers, we have a chart, and the chart shows it has different ranges, and I'll explain the ranges in a minute. But let's say it's on this range. The number four corresponds to 35 older units. Mm -hmm. So this is how you can tell this maps those numbers to different older units. But how do I can you change set up the other units. Oh, I show you which range. You mean which range I'm yeah. using? Yeah. So the range is selected by a plate. So these plates are installed underneath here. You take these two off, mm -hmm. and there's a plate underneath. So this plate, for example, you won't be able to see the holes because the hole is uh, less than uh, hundreds of a millimeter. Where is the hole? In the middle? <laughs> In the middle. Here you can no see way. it. Ah, yeah, you're right. Because these are bigger ones. Ah. That one you cannot see it. It's a very small one. Ah. So you see on the big ones, the dilution goes, for example, from 2 to 100. Like this is from 2 to 100. Mm -hmm. This one is from 4,000 to 30,000. That's why the holes are so small. Uh -huh. uh, here you can see where the laser made marking, maybe. But you cannot see no, the camera. Not in the is camera, camera, yes, but yes, I, I see it. I see but it. the holes themselves that come out here, you won't see because mm -hmm. they're so, so tiny. Mm -hmm. And this is what really makes this uh, accurate. Five years ago, I wouldn't be able to create such a hole in this pure stainless. This is pure stainless steel. Mm -hmm. So it would cost me like half a million dollars to have such thing. Uh -huh. But with the development of new technologies, I can now do this and it doesn't cost. I think each of these plates are like 40 or 50 dollars if you want a different range, so it's not expensive. Uh -huh. um, so now I can also do, so that was how we do an ambient, the air is pulled from around and goes into the hole. I can also put here a fitting and I can pull air from a bag. Let's say I take a sample and I take it from a smokestack mm -hmm. or a flux chamber. I can just connect it like this. What, what do you have inside the, the bag? I have inside N-butanol. And I'll show you, we can create N-butanol mixtures. Okay. And we're gonna, we can use them to screen our panelists. Mm -hmm. I think the video for this is on YouTube anyway. But okay. So uh, I can pull the air from this bag through here. And mm -hmm. it works exactly the same. I start to open it until I smell it. Mm -hmm. But uh, us usually you wouldn't have ambient odor 30,000. But here, by using this, I can really get a, you know, a high concentration sample. Now, how I made this bag as well, maybe I'll just show you quickly. Um, so we have a, a kit that mm -hmm. you use to create this in butanol. You have a micro syringe, a bottle of liquid and butanol, mm -hmm. and an evaporation chamber, a capsule. Mm -hmm. So what you do is, unfortunately there's already m butanol in it, but you draw a sample here, you put it inside, mm -hmm. and then you use the SM100 to put air inside here, up to 5 bar, 5.5. Mm -hmm. And because the volume here is known, and I know how much butanol I put, I can calculate how much is per meter. Very smart. Yeah, this way is uh, foolproof. You know, you just put it and you fill it up. You don't have to count the minutes or the flow rate or anything like this. Mm. Um, so the mixtures we have here. So for example, one microliter mm -hmm. gives you 40 ppm. Mm -hmm. And that's between 2,000 to 500 older units. Mm -hmm. So I can use this to screen my panelists. I can have them analyze this, and it tells you that when you install plate number two, mm -hmm. the people should smell the odor between step two and seven on that diluter that we saw. Mm -hmm. So when you do an analysis of this bag, and the person smells it at let's say 10, then you know they're not sensitive enough to be used as a panelist. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have, like I said on YouTube, a complete video of how we do that, how we do the sampling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to keep it short because uh, it's already 10 minutes and... Uh